Alright, so it's time to talk about RPCs. This is one of the core features that you will be using pretty frequently with Photon. RPCs are messages that you can send to other players and they're guaranteed to go through in the order that they are sent. This makes them ideal for passing in information that you need other players to have that would otherwise break the game. But also, it means that they cost more network traffic and can potentially slow down your game if you abuse them. So use RPCs with care. In this video, we will be using RPCs to let the master know when a player is ready to start the game. And then when the master has all players indicating that they are ready, they can hit the start button. To begin, I'm going to open up my canvases, object and hierarchy, go down to overlay canvases and then current room canvas and then enable it. I will expand current room canvas, select the start game button or you can just click it in the scene and then just shrink it a little bit, making room for another button over here on the left. I will select start game and duplicate it. I'm going to move it just below start game or actually just above it. Uh, where you put it doesn't really matter though. And I will call this ready up. I'm going to change the text on it to just the letter R. Um, just to indicate whether the player is ready or not ready. And then move the button over to the left a little bit. And then resize it so it's not overlapping start game. The new button is already referencing the player listening menu under the on click because we duplicated it from the start game one. So let's go ahead and open up that script. So I'm just going to double click player listing menu to get it open. And at the bottom of it is where we handle starting the game. We check if the master client is the one clicking the start button, then go ahead and start the game. I'm going to add a couple other things up top here. I'm going to add a serialized field, private text. In your case, it would probably be text mesh pro UGI. And then I'm going to name it ready up text. And I'm going to add a private field. And I will call it ready. And I'll set it to default of false. So private bool ready equals false. I'm going to want to reset the text on the ready up text whenever this object's enabled and as well the ready state. So I'm going to do private void on enable and do underscore ready equals false and ready up text dot text equals n for not ready. And you can see it expects an override here because the mono behavior pun callbacks uh, apparently uses on enable. So I'm going to change this to protected override void on enable and I'm going to do base dot on enable. Okay, so it says cannot change the access modifiers when overriding public. So mono behavior pun callbacks must be using public instead of protected. So I'm just going to change that real quick to public. And you know, now that I think about it, I'm probably going to want to reuse this code. So I'm going to actually cut it from on enable. And I'm just going to go down a tiny bit, probably right here, private void set ready up bool state. And I'm just going to paste it in there. And I will do ready equals state. And I'll do if ready, then ready up text equals r, else I'll just change ready up text to n. So that way I can uh, reutilize the same code without having to duplicate it. And then I'm going to go back to on enable and I'm going to do set ready up false. And I think that will be fine. So now I need to add an on click for when the player clicks the ready up button. So I'll do public void on click ready up. I only want this code to run if I'm not the master because the master indicates when the game starts so they can click start whenever they want. Um, so this shouldn't really be relevant to them. So if not photon master, I'm going to do set ready up and I'm going to set it to the opposite 
of ready. And now I need to set up the RPC. So I'm going to go down just a little bit. I'm going to do private void. And I'm going to lead it with RPC underscore to indicate that this is an RPC method, meaning it can be called over the network. I'm going to call it change ready state. And it's going to take a Boolean as a uh, parameter. And I'm just going to call the, the variable name ready. And then above it, to make it so that you call this over the network, we have to put pun RPC in these little brackets here. So now I'm going to go back to the on click action and right below set ready up, I'm going to call this RPC. So to do that, I'm going to do base referencing the base class, get the photon view component, which is already stored on it. Now I'm going to do dot RPC and I'm going to type in the method name of change ready state. Now this spelling has to be exact. So you might want to store this in another way, maybe constants or or some way that you'll know you won't make mistakes in the spelling. And then after I have the method name, I'm gonna do comma. You have the option to pass in a player, which we've talked about as a photon player, or you can choose an RPC target, which is what I'm going to do, dot, and then you can choose like the master client, um, others, others buffered, etc. So I'm gonna talk uh, real, real quickly about all these because they all serve a purpose. And they kind of say what they do if you hover over them as well. So this one basically says it sends it to all players and it'll execute it on the client immediately. This means that whatever a client is sending it will execute um, this RPC code right as soon as this method is executed or this call, regardless of if it passes through the server first. You have all buffered, which is essentially the same thing, but it buffers the RPC. So new players that join will get the message later. Now use care when uh, using the all buffered or even the all buffered via server because RPCs that are buffered just stack up and stack up and stack up. So if you send 10 calls and someone joins the server or the room, they're gonna receive all those 10 calls at once and that will slow down the time it takes them to join the room. And um, honestly, I've never actually went, I've never actually used the buffered calls because of this reason. It's kind of a bad implementation. It'd be nice if they had a way to buffer only the last call, but that's not the case. So when you're using these two, use them with care. And as far as the all buffered via server, it's the same thing. It sends to all clients, except it goes through the server first. So whenever you make this call, it won't call it locally until it comes through the server. And then you have all via server, which is the same thing except it's not buffered. You have master client, which is where only the master client receives a call. You have others, which is where everyone except the sender gets the message. And then you have others buffered, which is the same thing except it is buffered as we talked about earlier. So for this example, I want to send to the master client. And then I'm going to hit comma again, and here's where it expects the parameters. If you don't have any parameters, you wouldn't specify them. You would just leave it like this and use the semicolon at the end, and you're good. But we do have parameters. We have a bool state indicating whether they're ready or not. So I'm going to pass in underscore ready. And if you find that your RPCs are becoming overwhelming, you can purge them from the server. And to do that, you do photon network dot remove RPCs. You can also remove RPCs in a group as well remove custom properties. So there's two options when removing RPCs. You can do a photon view, which we haven't talked about yet. I'll cover that later. That's if you essentially want to remove RPCs for a specific object uh, rather than the entire player, which brings a second option where you can clear them out for the entire player. And the group option is for when you instantiate an object over the network, you can assign it a group. By default, it's group zero. Groups are basically subdivisions of what objects will receive messages, or it breaks them apart from one another, for example. So if you instantiate objects on group one, objects on group zero can't communicate with them. While this feature does have its uses, it's not something that you have to necessarily use 
in order to make your game work and it's not incredibly popular either so I won't be covering it at this time. I want to track which players are ready and which are not. So I actually realize that I need to pass in the player which is calling the ready state. So I'm going to set player type here as a parameter and just call the variable player with a lowercase p. And then where I call the RPC, I'm going to pass in the player which is calling. So that's photon network dot local player. And then add a comma, of course, like you would separate parameters normally. You can also use in what's called an RPC secure, which will optionally encrypt data. That way it will help prevent packet tampering. So I'm just going to highlight this line just to show you. And then change where it says RPC to RPC secure. And then it expects a boolean after a target. True to encrypt, false to not encrypt. So you can use RPC secure whether you're encrypting or not and just set the boolean here. Keep in mind though, this does use extra bandwidth. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that and stick with a standard RPC. And then continue on with determining what players have hit ready and which have set not ready. If you've only came here to learn how to use RPCs, you can go ahead and exit the video at this time. So now I need a way to store which players are ready and which are not. I believe our player listing script references the player. It does. So I'm going to add in a ready boolean to the player listing script as well. So let's do public bool ready and I'll set it by default to false and then I'm going to go back down to my player listing menu and I'm going to go to where the RPC is received and I'm going to find the player listing inside our stored listings and then change the bool appropriately. I think we actually have code for that under the on, on leave room. We do. So we have on player left room. Just head on up there and let's just copy this code real quick and head back down to where the RPC is received. And instead of destroying the listing, we're just going to change the boolean on it. And we'll have to um, change where it says other player equals player. That way it's searching for the player parameter that's being, that's being passed in and comparing it to the player stored on the listing. And like always, if not or if it's if it's found, then that's where we will change the uh, ready status. So then I'm gonna do listings index dot ready equals ready. And get rid of all this extra junk here. So now we just need to check and make sure that all players are ready whenever the start button's pressed. So I'm gonna go back up a little bit and go to on click start game. In between the brackets where we check if the uh, client is the master client, this is where we will also check if all players are ready. So I'm going to do a quick loop through the listings. And I only want to check them if the listing player is not the master client or not the local client, which would in this case be the master client because we're running this statement as well. So I'm going to do if underscore listings dot player whoops I gotta pass an I as the index dot player doesn't equal photon network dot local player we'll execute the code here and then we're just going to add another check if under, underscore listings dot I or sorry I as the index dot ready and actually I'm gonna put if not ready then return so what this will do as I go through all of our listings, which will be the room list or the player listings as they're shown in the room, it will check the player on those listings. And if it's not the local player hitting the start button, then it will check if they're ready or not. And if they're not ready, it will exit the method, disabling the start button essentially, or disabling the code beneath this bracket here. Now this does pose a potential problem if the master client was to leave the room, they're the one that's getting all of the ready uh, status indicators. So if the master client left the room and the other players don't have that status information and the tallies would be very incorrect. Um, so 
as a as a solution you'd have to make sure that all players receive the ready statuses if you wanted it to be possible to continue the the game if the master left or to rather keep you know still start the game after the master left doing those checks is a little off the path of what i want to cover it kind of steps outside the boundaries of photon so i won't be going over that instead what i will do is whenever the master client leaves the room I will also leave the room. I'm only going to do it on the rooms scene though. I won't do it inside the game scene. And to do that, I'm going to simulate clicking the leave room button. So I don't believe I have that exposed yet. So I'm going to do a search for class current room canvas. And looks like I have the leave room menu serialized, but I don't have it exposed public. So I'm just going to make a public leave room menu, leave room menu, get return underscore leave room. Now I will go back to my player listings menu script. I'm going to go up just a little bit. It doesn't really matter where you put it. I'm going to put mine above on player entered room. I'm going to do public override void. Now I'm going to look for on master client switched. This is called whenever the master client is switched in the game, as you probably could have guessed. It can be called when the master client leaves or whenever the master client is changed via network calls. So you can change the master client without um, being dependent on them leaving, such as if they're like a laggy player, if their ping is rather high, you could switch out to a new master client. And if I'm receiving this on master client switch call, then I know that uh, the master has left the room since I don't have any code which is manually changed in the master client. So I will do underscore rooms canvases dot current room canvas dot leave room menu. And I'm going to call the on click leave room action. And that's just the same thing as clicking the leave room button. I'm going to make sure all my scripts are saved and then head back to Unity. And then I need to select my player listing menu in the hierarchy. I'm going to go down to the ready up object, expand it. And I need to drop this text reference inside my ready up text. So I'm just going to drag and drop the text under ready up right in there. And then I'm going to click current room canvas and then disable it so it's no longer over the create or join room canvas. We also need to change the on click action for the ready up button. So select the ready up button and then under the on click change it from player listings menu start game to player listings menu on click ready up. And also under the code we called base.photonview down below here where, where we make our RPC call we have to actually add that component to the object which has the script on it. So going back to Unity, that's our player listings menu script. So I'm just going to do add component and I'm going to type in photon view. And I'll talk more about how this works and what it can do later. But for now, let's just add it to the object and then move forward and test it out. I went ahead and built my project as well hit play in the Unity editor. If you want to test on your side, go ahead and pause the video and do so and have everything up like so. All right, so under the built one, the built client, I'm going to make a new room. I'm just going to call it my room, hit create room. And I can see that it's created. So this is the master client now because it's the client that made the room. So with that said, the end button won't work because if you remember we made it only work on clients which were not master client. So I see the rum pop up here in the editor. I'm going to click to join and the start game button's not going to work because this only works for the master client. Ideally you'd probably hide these so only the proper uh, clients or users can see or use them but I'm not going to spend much time on that so I'm just going to head back and just show you that I can't start the game on the master client because this client hasn't readied up yet. So if I hit the no button, or sorry, the N for not ready, it changes to an R for ready. And if I hit start game, it will work. Now I know it's going to work because I already tested it, 
But what I didn't test is hitting leave room and then trying to rejoin the room with the non-ready state and then going back and hitting start game. It looks like it's not working, which is good because that's the desired behavior. So I'm gonna hit ready up again, go back to my client and hit start game. Excellent, seems to be working fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of everything and stop the player. I actually forgot to show testing the code where if the master leaves, the other clients leave as well. I did test it out locally though, outside the video and it does work. So if you don't want to have this feature and you want to be able to just join in whenever, I'm gonna just go back to my uh, Visual Studio here and all you gotta do is just get rid of this check here and then go back up to where we handle on master switch and we leave the room, just go ahead and comment this out as well. If you don't mind the current behavior, uh, go ahead and leave the code in. But if you want faster testing, I'd probably comment it out and then come back to it later. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit more about a photon view.